I'm continuing my video series on the fake history of King Ludwig's castles. This is part 3. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous videos. The links are in the description. I recommend watching them all to get the full picture. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Wikipedia says, Despite the main residence of the Bavarian monarchs at the time, the Munich residence, being one of the most extensive palace complexes in the world, King Ludwig II of Bavaria felt the need to escape from the constraints he saw himself exposed to in Munich, and commissioned Neuschwanstein Palace on the remote northern edges of the Alps as a retreat, but also in honor of composer Richard Wagner, whom he greatly admired. Among many other properties, Ludwig's family owned these in nearby Munich. But hey, he got bored in these, so he built several other private residences for himself. Wikipedia continues, Ludwig chose to pay for the palace out of his personal fortune and by means of extensive borrowing rather than Bavarian public funds. Construction began in 1869, but was never completed. The castle was intended to serve as a private residence for the king, but he died in 1886, and it was opened to the public shortly after his death. This castle too, was said to be incomplete and intended as private residence, as if he didn't already have enough. At least that's what they tell the 65 million tourists who have visited Neuschwanstein. Just like Ludwig's other castles, Neuschwanstein was opened to the public in 1886. I cut this part out of a 1619 map of southern Germany. It is the basis for my claim that Neuschwanstein was already there a long, long time ago. We see a castle called Alt Hohenschwangau, which is still standing. In the late 1800s, it was renamed to Hohenschwangau, a name it still carries today. Right across from it, we see a castle called New Hohenschwangau. I believe it was renamed to Neuschwanstein and falsely attributed to Ludwig II. Let's clarify the wording. Neuschwanstein is New Swan Stone. Alt Hohenschwangau is Old High Swan Area. New Hohenschwangau is New High Swan Area. The general town and area are called Schwangau, Swan Area. Here's an 1865 postcard showing royalty riding on a swan-like device like jet ski, meeting the composer Richard Wagner and King Ludwig on the Alp Lake, Hohenschwangau in the background. They're meeting Prince Paul taxis. No, it's not about water taxis, it's the royal family member Prince Paul of Thurn and taxis. The three men were friends and admirers of ancient mythologies around the Holy Grail. The Swan Boat and Castle Neuschwanstein are both based around these ancient stories that Wagner turned into operas. These are the two castles side by side, just like on the ancient maps. Of course, the official narrative is differs. This is from the same Wikipedia page. In 1868, the ruins of the medieval twin castles were completely demolished. The remains of the old keep were blown up. The foundation stone for the palace was laid on September 5th, 1869. In 1872, its cellar was completed, and in 1876, everything up to the first floor, the gatehouse being finished first. At the end of 1882, it was completed and fully furnished, allowing Ludwig to take provisional lodgings there and observe the ongoing construction work. In 1874, management of the civil works passed from Edward Riedel to George von Dahlmann. The topping out ceremony for the Paulus was in 1880, and in 1884, the king moved into the new building. In the same year, the direction of the project passed to Julius Hoffman, after Dahlman had fallen from the king's favor. The palace was erected as a conventional brick construction, and later encased in various types of rock. The white limestone used for the fronts came from a nearby quarry. As so often with these new builds at the end of the 1800s, they were erected at the site of older similar buildings of which photographs are mysteriously missing. After I had outlined to this to my friends, one pointed out that there are pictures of the old castle that stood there previously. I asked him to provide old photos. He came up with this. That is indeed a picture, but it's not a photo. It's the only drawing I found, despite searching the internet for hours. It seems there is no photo of the previous castle or ruin, 
even though photography existed in Germany from 1820 onwards, and even though the area has been a tourist hotspot long before Neuschwanstein. There are no drawings of the previous castle, because there was no previous castle, in my view. The current castle is the previous castle. The caption on the drawing says that this is what the ruins are supposed to have looked like in 1832, but the picture itself was published in 1894, years after Nischwanstein was standing. As if someone said, hey, people are starting to ask questions. We need to draw pictures of the ruin we claim stood there before. But are there construction photos? Yes, there are. The same person showed me this picture. Again, doesn't this debunk everything I'm saying here? Once again, decide after you watch the whole videos. Obviously, there is no castle here, only scaffolding. Imagine having to construct on a steep mountain like that. Impressive. The caption says that this picture is from 1870 and that it was published in 1936. And this is the final product from the same angle, image taken in 1886. I'm curious to discover how men with chisel and hammer got all these materials up the narrow mountain road and built this thing. Upon closer examination of the construction photo, I couldn't help but wonder if it's a pre-excavation photo. Compare these two photos. The mountain looks higher before construction than after, also in comparison to the lakes in the background. It wouldn't be the first time a building dug up out of the mud is presented as newly built by late 1800s hustlers. Unfortunately, I didn't find any other photo from that angle of before construction, so it's hard to say. But here's a photo from Midway Construction that potentially proves my point. Look very closely and compare to the previous photos. Just one example of several. The piece I have circled in red is still covered in dirt on the Midway photo. It's protruding from under the earth because it's buried there. I'm not presenting this as proof, just as something to consider. If you guys find this video interesting, I'll make a part 4.